If you've ever had water in the fuel, it can be a rather frustrating experience, especially if you don't have a solution. Today we're going to be testing three different products to determine which one of those is the best. We'll be trying the yellow bottle of heat, some sea foam, as well as some 91% isopropyl alcohol. We're going to determine which one of these products works the best for removing water and also which one works the best for breaking up ice that is formed inside your fuel system. So let's get the testing underway and see which one of these products works the best. So before we check out the safety data sheet on each product, we need to kick off the first test and we'll come back to it near the end of the video since this test is going to take 24 hours. What we're going to do is add one ounce of water to each cup, then we're going to add gasoline. Now what we're going to do is mix up each one of these really well and place them in the freezer that's at 15 below zero Fahrenheit. In a few hours the water will turn into ice and once the water turns into ice we're going to add heat, seafoam, isopropyl alcohol to each one of the containers respectively and we'll see if any of them can melt the ice. We're going to do the exact same thing as we just did with these three containers. However, we're also going to add the heat, seafoam, and isopropyl alcohol before we place them in the freezer to see if any of these products can prevent water from turning into ice. We're going to go ahead and place each one of these inside the freezer and we'll check back in 24 hours towards the end of the video that is to see how each one of these is doing. This is the safety data sheet for heat and what is the main ingredient? It's methanol, 100%. So if you're trying to get water out of a fuel system, you definitely want something that's water soluble. And fortunately, methanol is. As you can see, the safety data sheet indicates that it's 100% soluble. So what exactly is in seafoam? A hydrocarbon blend, less than 95%, and isopropanol, less than 25%. So I'm a huge fan of the seafoam product. I've used it and it's helped me many times. However, it is not designed to treat water contamination. According to the safety data sheet, it is not water soluble. So isopropyl alcohol is water soluble. In fact, the main two ingredients in it include water and isopropyl alcohol. So the next test, we're going to see how well each one of these products deals with water contamination. So what I'm going to do is add one part of water, 16 parts of gasoline, and four parts of each of the products into this container. Then we're going to shake it up real well and see if it separates out. Now after we do that, I'm going to try to run each one of them inside of a gasoline engine to see how the engine performs. So you'll notice the water line is a lot lower in the seafoam container than the heat. And the reason for this is in the heat container, the water and the methanol has mixed together. The top portion is your gasoline and this is your mixture between the methanol and the water. In the seafoam container, the seafoam mixed thoroughly with the gasoline. Some water as well as the 10% ethanol content will be at the very bottom. The entire contents of the isopropyl alcohol seem foggy compared to the seafoam or the heat. The control looks fairly clear. The top part is the gasoline and then the ethanol water content is at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is mix each one of these up thoroughly and then put them back down to see what they look like. It's been about 12 hours since we added the heat to the water contaminated fuel. The fuel is above the 200 milliliter line and below the 200 milliliter line is the heat as well as the water and ethanol. So the way this product works is the heat and the water are going to mix together and your engine is going to have to burn that separately from the gasoline. So the question becomes, can a gasoline engine run off of 80% heat and 20% water? If you compare the heat to the seafoam, you can see that the seafoam mixed in with the gasoline and left the water ethanol content alone at the bottom. So if I added this to a fuel tank of a vehicle, what's going to happen is the engine is going to try to run off of the water ethanol blend and it's just not going to work. I'm not going to try to run the seafoam through a gasoline engine because I can tell you with absolute certainty that the engine isn't going to run on water. Very much like the heat, the isopropyl alcohol, the 93%, actually mixed quite well with the water at the bottom of the container.
So I've adjusted the air fuel ratio to get as much fuel as possible into this engine because if you're using methanol, you need about twice as much methanol as you would gasoline. So let's see if this engine will run on straight methanol. We're going to go ahead and add some water to this methanol and see how the engine runs and see how the flame looks. So we have the isopropyl alcohol, which includes the gasoline up top and the water isopropyl ethanol mix on the bottom. Just like last time, when I dump this in, the gasoline is gonna hit the tank first and going to fill up the carburetor bowl. Then we're gonna end up with the water isopropyl alcohol ethanol mix at the bottom of the fuel tank. So the engine will likely run fine until it draws in the isopropyl alcohol and water mix. At that point, I'm gonna to have to richen up the amount of fuel it's getting in order for the engine to continue to run. It'll be interesting to see if all the water content helps clean the carbon inside the engine. So earlier we added heat, seafoam, and isopropyl alcohol to each one of these containers. So let's check to see if there's any ice that's formed in the bottom. Let's first start off with the heat. Okay, there's no ice inside the container that had the heat mixed in it. Yep, looks like we have ice inside the container that had the seafoam in it. Big chunk of ice. Okay, no ice. So the isopropyl alcohol as well as the heat did the job. So imagine it's well below freezing and unfortunately you have water in your fuel system which is turned to ice. If you add heat or isopropyl alcohol, will it actually cause the ice to melt? Well, we're about to find out. I'm gonna bring out two containers, one that we're gonna add the heat to and one we're gonna add the isopropyl alcohol to, and we're gonna put it back in the freezer. The reason we put it back in the freezer is to see if these products can successfully melt the ice while in freezing conditions. So as you can see, there's definitely some ice inside this container. Now, just above the ice, there's a little bit of ethanol content, so that's why it's not going to be entirely solid. Rather than measuring this out, what I'm gonna do is just fill the container up to nearly the top and get this back in the freezer before the ice melts. Okay, I'm gonna put these back in the freezer and we'll check back on these in a few hours. Unfortunately, the heat did not melt the ice. The ice is still in the fuel system. It doesn't appear that the isopropyl alcohol did anything on this ice while the heat actually seemed to do a little bit of work on it. It wasn't quite as solid. It seems a little more slushy. 
So I really enjoy reading the comments you guys provide, and I'd like to know your experiences with water and fuel, or as well as ice and fuel. Have you had to deal with this? And if so, did you use heat, or did you have some other product that worked well? I really enjoyed experimenting with isopropyl alcohol as well as heat. Additionally, seafoam is definitely not designed to remove water. So anyone using it as a fuel stabilizer, it may work well for that, but if you get water inside the fuel, you're still gonna deal with some corrosion issues as a result of water in the fuel. Which brings me to my next idea, which is to test fuel stabilizers to see how they react with water. Anyway, I get a lot of great video ideas from you guys. I hope you'll keep giving me some video ideas and I'll keep making videos. Please take care and I look forward to next time.